we have good sound bars. I love having good sound. I that's hope an, we have good sound. <laughs> that would be a bad reflection on me. <laughs> Thank you, Scotty, for setting up sound tonight. I'm more than my pleasure. It's awesome. Thank you. To have professionals on the set. That breeze uh -oh. feels terrific. Yeah, it does. What that's could sweet. go wrong? Nothing. We have a good cast tonight. Uh, where? Oh. No computers to worry about tonight. Oh, that sound sounds good. Good? Good. All the way around? You're hot, but it sounds good. I'd lower you. I'd take you. I'd take you down just a little bit. We can swap seats and you, can you give me the fan? It's because you've got that low microphone voice. Well, I do. I have a radio, <laughs> radio voice. Richard, thank, thank you for running camera for, for us tonight. Yes, right. I, I, right. I do. I do. I, I was also a DJ for many years. <laughs> All right, um, Richard, we've done this before. Give us a countdown. Look, it's Daniel. Daniel's here too. Two, one. The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. <laughs> and by GL Robotics. With over 61 colors of 3D printing filaments in stock, your gateway to new technology. Check out their website at glroboticsusa.com. Further support is provided by Microengineering, keeping you on track with quality products for 55 years. Check out their website at www.microengineering.com. Order from your local dealer or order direct by calling 1-800-462-6975. Additional support is provided by Spring Creek Model Trains, your destination for model trains. Stop in and say, wow. Check out their website at springcreekmodeltrains.com and by Intermountain Railway Company, where the detail makes the difference. Check out their website at intermountain-railway.com. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week, show number 233 for May 6th. 2023. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat Show at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And yes, I always start out this way. The June video is now getting put together. We've got a lot of, I still got to do an interview with the new products coming from various manufacturers now that we have on that show. Um, and this month is the last month of the four part series on how to build that beautiful narrow gauge HON3 layout using amazing microengineering track and I'm only saying that because I have the crew around me that makes this beautiful product. That's not the only reason. <laughs> but it's coming out and thank you Joshua you bought that entire layout for me after I built it. I did and it's awesome. All right so let's go around the table first. First of all I'm starting over here with Reese. Thank Reese you. Dwiggins for microengineering. Right next to him is his awesome brother Jack. He's cool. He works hard. <laughs> I, I've sat down there and watched him work. I know what he does. On the other side of uh, Joshua, I've got his father, John. Hey, John, welcome to St. Louis. Thank you. It's good to have you on the show. Now, look who's sitting right next to me is Joshua Barton. What's up, everybody? It's good to have you on the set tonight, Josh. Thanks for uh, And sitting me all here. the way on the end, all the way from Colorado, Denver, Colorado, in fact, I've got Scotty Hicks. Now, you'll remember Scotty's been on the show previously with us, but he is a sound tech engineer, and I promise you tonight's <laughs> sound is probably going to be dynamite. Yes. Fingers crossed. Yes. yes. Fingers crossed. So rock and roll. I do want to start out right away with, I've gotten some really interesting models from Intermountain that got me so excited, I want to start out the show talking about them, and that are the brand new release of the ET44 AC locomotives. And the first one that I'm going to talk about has got a story behind it, because you, Scotty, and myself studied this today. And that's the Navajo Mine Railroad. And that's the beautiful locomotive here in tan and orange with that uh, Santa Fe war bonnet on it. But this is a railroad where I shot, by the way, these models outside so you can see this gorgeous engine from on top and on the side. As I tell you that this railroad, this Navajo Mine Railroad, has 13.8 miles of mainline. 
total main line, main line trackage of 17 miles, including the yard and the sidings. Wow. This is the <clears throat> perfect layout for your layout because it's attainable. Um, they run two trains on this uh, main line to supply the power plant with the coal, and each train only has 21 coal cars in them. And Intermountain has supplied us with all of the various coal cars that they've got, that they've manufactured so far, whereas each one of these cars has got a name on it or a saying like Sweetwater or Red Mesa, and there's just every car is literally named, not only just with car number, with but it's, what a fantastic layout to build. This is perfect. Again, they cover the four, what do you call it, the four corners? The four corners, four corner state area. Region. And they are located in New Mexico. Okay. On the uh, Navajo Reservation. Uh, okay. So this is perfectly attainable for a layout. If I were to do a run by as we were talking, and I'm probably going to do that, you'll be able to see all the various names on these cars as this 18 car consists rolls past the camera. So thank you very much Intermountain Railway for helping us support this hobby. And before I leave it with that, let me say that I think they sent me another one because this was a separate box. I've got a CSX ET44AC. I got photographs of this shot outside as well from on top and on the side. Loka number 3407. These come with Loke sound. I mean, they've got all the bells and whistles. And if you look at the photos that I had just shown you, even the roof detail is specific to the locomotive numbers. They're really hitting out of the park. So thank you very much for that. And that's pretty much what I had initially on my show notes. So let's go to John and Jack and Reese, and let's catch up on our favorite company that makes track in this hobby, and that's Microengineering down in Fenton, Missouri. They make um, all scales and various codes of track. You name the codes, codes 70, code 83, even code 40 for you end scalers that want that rail. They've got that. They've got code 55 track ready to go for you end scalers. They've got concrete track. They've got turnouts. They've got bridge abutments, bridge piers, buildings. I mean, go through the wheel works line of vehicles. This this family has taken on a challenge, and so far, from what I heard on the back porch tonight, it's all going to work out for all of us. <laughs> Is that pretty much a synopsis? Uh, yes, yes. We're, um, we're making progress every day. Um, as we've told you when we were here in August, uh, we are relocating the, the uh, facility to our new home, or, or to our hometown. And um, we're making a lot of progress there. We've, we've had issues with getting electrical equipment, uh, electrical boxes specifically. You were but, talking about that outside yeah, today. Yeah, we have one particular piece. You've gotten on the electric for seven months. run to your building. Yes. You've gotten that three-phase power that you need right. to run these big machines. Right. But you're still waiting on the components for the internal part of it. It yeah. is the, in, the internal. We have a, we have a 400-amp three-phase box that comes into the, to the building or the power comes into it. And uh, we are waiting on the internal parts for that box. Um, all of the rough wiring is done. Insulating is going to start uh, Monday. Shortly after that, we'll be finishing out the inside of the building. But we are waiting on those components. Um, we do have power in the building because we were able to uh, bypass the three-phase part. And, and we have a smaller 100-amp box that handles the office area and stuff. But as far as running the, the bigger machines, we have to have that uh, three-phase power. The machines will run better, they'll run more consistent, um, and we'll be able to deliver a better product. There you go. That's great. So you've been working down there, you've been pretty much hands-on. Every time I go there, I call, you're the gentleman <laughs> that answers the phone. So that means you're awake all day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't uh, sleep until 2. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Uh, how's, the, how's it going? Has it been what it is, Jack, that you expected? I mean, I know oh, gosh, you've worked no. with your family before, <laughs> right? Yeah. But you've taken on this adventure, and you've got a lot of weight on your shoulders, too, don't you? Yeah. Um, I think overall right? it's yeah. gone. It wasn't what we expected. We, um, f First of all, from a family point of view, this has been the best functioning endeavor we've done. Uh, as a family, like, I, that's been the least of my worries on this project. Um, we've run into a lot of issues with production that we've been sorting out, a lot of things we had to learn about oh, equipment and equipment maintenance and the little tweaks you've got to make to make a consistent product all the time. Um, we had a leg there into December to beginning of February where we had some production issues because of equipment that was going bad. 
uh, finally figured it out, and now we've got everything's kind of back on track. Um, our staff is getting more capable and competent with what they're doing. We um, we are very fortunate to have a a staff that's from Macon, and they're all very detail oriented, and they they seem to care about what they're doing. And I can't ask for much more than that. They give me all kinds of feedback and ask lots of questions, which is what we need. We need to know when you're making a really a, a quality product, you've got to have expectations, and they're good about that. Um, so I, we're really fortunate with them. Um, and the team's done a really good job of figuring out what the quality issues are and catching up on them. We did a batch of switches back in August and September when we first took over. Um, not as proud of them as I would would have liked to have been. <laughs> we ran into a lot of issues, but we got them resolved. And we are and and as these come up with people out in the out in the hobby, we of course replace the products. But um, we're le- we're learning a lot about our what it takes to make a quality switch consistently. Um, particularly switches. Switches are, you know, 90% of your headache comes from switches. Right. <laughs> your tra- track's straightforward. Track's easy. But the switches we've been learning a lot on. And your switches are sprung. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. an added benefit for us model railroaders, but I bet it doesn't make your life. Uh, me, no. <laughs> Girls, they're not as big a fan of it because they're the ones putting it together. But they're right. they're doing a fantastic job. Looky what I found. Oh, we've got a crossover, yeah. Yes. We, um... Everything on this, we've just had little learning incidents with everything from spikes to tie links to how we mix plastic. We had a little run where we, we tested some stuff on, on different blends of plastic to figure out what was giving us the best product, yes. thinking that was what was causing problems with our uh, injection back in January. Um, no, but overall, our staff has done a fantastic job of learning where to look consistently, quickly. They answer each other's questions. They're They're getting a lot better about, you know talking amongst themselves before coming to us which is fantastic because i've I, my plate mm-hmm. just gets a little fuller every day sure. uh, and reese has been doing a fantastic job of keeping my floor moving while i'm not always I'm, i've been uh, running our office for the last couple months uh hats off to anybody who manages an office that paperwork <laughs> is a nightmare being able to answer the phone all day is a nightmare um, and it never seems like it gets, it never goes, oh, it's, it's a, just a pile. It just that, piles but, up. But that's just great that you have all these extra sets of eyes yeah, to exactly. catch all those little things. That just makes a better product for yeah. you guys. I've had other people tell me it's a nightmare when I call too. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I mean, I, I don't even get the phone answered all the time as much as I'd like to. Uh, but no, it's, stuff's been going better. I think we're getting more confident every week. I think you'd agree with that, right, Dad? Yeah. We're, we're more confident every week. That the product we're making is 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 well received. We're developing a better eye for what we need to look for, and even our our. I know we had a problem for a while um, with the previous ownership and us as well, where you'd call me and you'd say, "Hey, I want an HO eighty three number six turnout. When's it going to be available?" And I'd say to you, with all the honesty in my heart, three weeks. <laughs> I was naive. I didn't. <laughs> we, we don't know what it takes until you get into it a while. But um, it's the, even that stuff. We're getting better at predicting and and. Uh, I think it's going to take us longer than we initially expected to catch up, but we are getting caught up. Uh, there was a significant uh, my my production manager is named Philanda. Philanda fills all my orders that go out, and Philanda and I like to high five each other when we can fill eighty percent of a new order that comes in. Ninety percent. Occasionally, you get a big one from somebody like Walters, and you get the whole thing. And that's oh, you go buy lunch when when you fill out the whole order, you got everything in stock. So we're getting better at it. Um, well, we're looking forward to our move. I think all the, since my whole staff is from the Macon area now, and Dad wants to be more involved and be around, I think it'll be nice for us to get moved. Mm -hmm. I know Reese is excited Mm -hmm. for it. Yeah, to get everything settled and finally be able to bring everyone together and uh, really boost morale within our our staff for one, but also us. I mean, day to day, we're shooting for this goal. We're trying to get ourselves up there, and every day we get a little bit closer, but it definitely seems to make, uh, make things a lot easier once we have everyone settled back home, I think. We, I want to touch on the staff for just a minute. On 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 the, we call them the girls, but we have um, four fantastic ladies that work in the factory. They come down Sunday night or Monday morning, and they spend four days. They work four ten-hour days, and they get a lot done in those four days. And um, we don't we don't have to worry about them not being there. That's we awesome. don't have to worry about um, absenteeism. Uh, as he was talking about Philanda, the production manager, uh, I think we talked and Philanda had missed 
one one day or maybe not even one day like in eight half months. A day, yeah. Half a day or something in eight months. Something about getting sick and um, having car trouble. We also, back I'd, back. I'd, I'd like to point out uh, Georgia, Philanda, Kayla, and uh, Daisy. And Daisy. Those are the, the, the four that are in there, and then Jack and Reese are there. Uh, we've just brought a new office manager on board. Uh, she will work remotely from the Macon area into the system, but we think that'll take a lot of the load off of, yep. of Jack as far as <laughs> bringing in orders and following up with invoicing and, and so on. So right. um, it's, but I tell you what, if you don't have good people, you can't make any of this work. That that's that's been something we've learned too, yeah. Um, Renee starts on Monday, so if you start calling, you'll start hearing from Renee me, more and me less, which it's good for all of us. <laughs> yeah. You're always polite on the phone. Oh, yeah, but I'm tired of answering the phone. <laughs> <laughs> because we're a little corner of the world. Well, we get an awful lot of phone traffic. <laughs> you're, out, you're out there working. You're doing your job. You're making the machines run. You're in your zone. Yeah. And then I totally get that. Yeah. So this is good. So Monday morning, right? More Renee, hopefully. Renee. Yeah. Renee is Monday's. Can't dream. wait to talk um, to you. Well, and two, it doesn't help. We got a machine that makes a whining noise when it runs low on oil. It sounds just like a phone ringing, and if you're if you're listening to music or something, it takes two rings before you realize it's ringing. <laughs> so it doesn't help. But uh, it's been going well, though. Now, for somebody like me who is just going into uh, DCC, what would I be looking for in a switch of that where I would know it is DC compatible? Um, I so going to go ahead and preface this with from a technical point of view i'm not much more knowledgeable about dcc switches than a, any layman out there a dad that's more dad's field um essentially your your dcc turnouts are uh your frog is insulated it's that's not connected it. okay. and that's your that's your tell um i don't know if everybody in the hobby has a continuity tester like a multimeter but that's the quickest way to tell is where how it's it's connected right. to each other. The microengineering turnout's got an isolated frog. Yep. So right. therefore, that's a DCC-friendly turnout. Right. If you looked at the old Shinohara turnouts, which were straight rail from the points mm -hmm. through the frog, completely through, or unless you hand lay your own turnouts, yeah. you get the same issue. Right. Where, as you've seen me do in so many What's Neat videos for Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine where I bring in the turnouts first. When I did all this narrow gauge stuff around this entire layout because I had that Blackstone account and I went crazy. I spent $15,000 on narrow gauge equipment, books, freight cars, <laughs> track, and completely rebuilt this layout including the section that ran up the middle of the room yeah. that we needed the space for to have this show where I had to get rid of all of that. But in those videos I've shown how to take a, I'm not going to call it a non-DCC ready turnout, but a turnout where you've got to isolate the frog manually with a Dremel motor tool, mm -hmm. and then you take jumper wires and you put them on the outside opposing converging tracks to give the power to those dead rails on the mm -hmm. inside. That works out beautifully. It takes a little bit of extra time, but again, you can take any type of turnout like that and work. The yeah. beauty of these microengineering turnouts, and we made a joke about it a minute ago, is the fact that they've got the sprung frogs, I mean yeah. the sprung points, so that when you flip the switch, you don't even need to use a switch machine. You don't have to buy one of those caboose black switch machines and put them in there. These turnouts have tension so that when you switch the number six turnout left or right or any of the turnouts, ON30, all of them, go through them, they all have springs. Right. And they, they, they trip past center. They have, the spring is made in a manner that once the, once the points move, it keeps continuous pressure against positive tension. Yeah, positive right. tension. Yeah. Okay, there you go. It's There's a, the engineer it's a blessing <laughs> when it comes to an engine that runs and doesn't stagger. But right. now you've got all these engines now. Um, look at all the various components now that are on the decoders where um, you see it's what's it called? C constant current or current keepers. Yeah, current, current keepers, keeper. that's one of the names. Keep alive. Um, keep alive is another one from another manufacturer. Um, but whereas now these engines will run three feet. Um, without stalling, okay? Or take it off the track and it'll run for two minutes. The only problem with that is <laughs> if, if it exceeds your dead space on a lift-out section in your layout where you have a walkway because then that engine's going to keep on tanking and tanking until you yeah. got a cool floor crash, which I'll put on the, <laughs> I'll gladly put on the show. I Look, I showed, the, what are these uh, yellow locomotives right now? U50Cs, mm -hmm. the Atherns? Yes. All three of those went tanking off of Kimswick one day onto the floor. I videotaped it and then I made a video on how to put them back together again because they just 
went back together. It's not that big of a calamity, actually. Sometimes these locomotives survive floors. But that's a whole other show. <laughs> I know. When we have glue uh, sponsors. I know, right, Scotty? <laughs> glue everything back together. Yeah. All right, Scotty, so you drove all the way from Denver, Colorado. And yes, we did. And My wife and I, 47 years, and we brought out these engines here. These are old Atherin Blue Box. All right. They started out life as SD uh, SD forty dash twos, which after doing the research, I found that the door configuration was the same for the SD thirty eights, just a little different radiator configuration, uh, along with the dynamic brake blisters up here. These were actually cast by an old company called Utah. They're at the time when I was doing these, these engines are probably close to about 25 years old. And uh, they are currently on the shelf re waiting for rebuilding. So, new Atherin motors. They look good, man. Yeah, that orange yeah, real good. So, like but um, this was long before what we have now. So, Details Associates, Details West. All right, many different parts, many different companies um, going through finding detail parts and putting these together. <laughs> this was my hometown railroad. Um, lived for 50 years in Lake Zurich, Illinois. And uh, this is the engine, or this is the railroad that ran through there, was the EJ&E, which of course now is a fallen flag to CN, but every once in a great while, there you you'll go. see you'll see the J orange flying through. Very cool. But uh, we have two SD38-2s, and they also had in the 700 series uh, SD, or I'm sorry, GP38-2s. And uh, you would see those not quite as often as you would the road units, but every once in a great while, I do have some photos, um, it would be a, tagged on as a third unit. and. It would probably go up to Waukegan, which was the end of the line, Waukegan, Illinois. And they did have a yard up there. There used to be a turntable up there, roundhouse and everything, but um, unfortunately lost to fire. Okay. Mm. Um, before these, I remember as a very young, young child, they used to have Baldwin center cabs. Oh, those are wow. cool locomotives. Yeah, those the are Baldwin very cool. Baldwin Center Cabs. Yeah, I don't remember the numbers. I think there were 6,000-2-2 or something along those lines. But those things, you know, as a little kid, these things were just massive. <laughs> sure. Um, just recently, I found someone who is 3D printing the Center Cab Baldwins. Okay. okay. Wow. That's, um, That's kind of cool. Yeah, so $200 a copy, but in today's... Right, oh, that's nothing. You know. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes because yeah. after you tell us about your building, I want to ask these guys if they've gotten any closer to the uh, 3D printing where they wanted to do development. Yeah. So show us the building you brought oh, okay. today. Uh, this building is a Walters building. Go ahead and building. just put it right up there in the middle. All right, this building is a Walters building. And this was the bank where all you got were just the I beams. And everything oh, else. that Walters construction kit. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. The Walters construction kit. And if I can do this without making it fall apart. Yes, let's. I try did and the do that. interior. I used to do. Oh, I that was is so a garbage cool. man for Look at that. 39 years. Okay. And I also did roll off. So I would go to buildings that were under construction. Uh, see them in different stages of construction and when Walters came out with this kit I thought you know this would be really cool to put the subflooring in all right um, oh wow well, look at this oh put, look at that the lights on the oh top. wow it's I lit <laughs> I did okay, water cool. piping this plumbing year. you did plumbing yeah that's yeah, cool. indoor elevator plumbing. shaft <laughs> we have an elevator shaft here oh. we have the stairs Next to Look them. And oh, just a little yeah. bit a little bit different detail. We have a welder over here getting ready to weld the, <laughs> the seams down to the floor. Um, fully lit. But 
I did the uh, railing all out of wood. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, you can take this, you get this bare bones skeleton of a building and you can put it in almost any stage that you want. Sure, you know, one of the other the things detail. Was if you get two of these buildings, okay, you just keep going. So, oh. <laughs> but normally with a building of this sort being a three-story building, um, the elevator doesn't use cables and everything else. They use a piston, hydraulic piston. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what pushes the car up and down. So there's nothing on top. But uh, it was a lot of fun to do and just doing a lot of research and a lot of picture taking of different construction sites and stuff like that. Um, I pulled this one off the layout just to bring. I thought it was kind of fun to do. Yeah, no, it's cool. cool. Yeah. So Thank you for that. Thank you for also uh, being here today. It's awesome. You called me and said you were coming at the last yeah, minute, last which minute. is great. And also thank you for uh, uh, helping us set up at that 2019 Train oh, Fest yeah. show where we had a stage. That was fun. And we had people in the audience and all the cameras, and you did our sound. That was you were in the back room doing this. That was and <laughs> doing that. <laughs> and I was up here yeah. trying to adjust Good while we're point. doing the interviews with 14 or 18 different manufacturers. Yeah, everybody's using a different mic, and I'm going, Thank you for introducing yourself. Because <laughs> <laughs> I could have, we could have never, uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, one, one thank of the other you. Things, one of the other things, though, during my years of garbage, I have made a few finds, okay, one of which was this here. This is, if you work for the phone company, you know exactly what this yeah. is. It's Solid wire. core, wire. yeah. Body's Solid core here wire. Tonight. Right. All right. I found a 120 foot section of this with 50 pair of these <laughs> wires in there. Wow. Enough wire for a lot Enough time. wire yeah. for quite a few layouts. And these wires are great for the old dual coil switches, the right. endless switches and stuff yeah. like that. One of the other finds while I was on residential was my 1928 Hamilton Conductors Pocket Railroad Wow, watch. that's cool. No, that's way cool. Mm -hmm. Dude. Which, it does work. Wow. I just it's haven't watched Somebody threw that, that away. Yeah. Somebody accidentally threw this away, mixed in. <laughs> with, with a box of something from somebody's bedroom. A <laughs> dresser drawer from a gentleman who had passed away. Mm. And they didn't bother to sort through a lot of things. Right. So, over the years, you learn what to look for and how to look for it. <laughs> well, think about that. This, how many people? This was this was actually in a le a little leather pouch, and I happened to see it, and I I just grabbed the leather pouch, and it wasn't until after the route that I pulled the leather pouch out of my pocket and went, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> wow. Uh, I had the serial number tracked back to 1928, built by Hamilton, and the way that you change the time, because a conductor keeps pulling his pocket watch in and out back then, the stem would pop up and it would change the time. So Hamilton came up with the idea of you undo the glass face, there's a little lever on the inside of the glass face that you pull up, that engages the hands, now you can change your time. Wow. You put your lever back down, screw your face back on, now you can wind the watch. Okay. That's cool. So that's one of my treasures wow. in Very my neat. 39 years of being that's a It's got to be one man. of the cool watches we've ever had on yeah. the show. All right, the last time you gentlemen were on, we discussed 3D printing, and that might be a good resource for you to um, create pre-production or prototype one-offs for design and study. Right. I suggested you guys call Greg Summerlin down at GNL Robotics yes, you do. because he's got this amazing business that he is building that is doing nothing but getting bigger and he provides service. So if you guys have any questions, you could call him up and he'll either Skype with you to help you walk you through it or just talk to you directly on the phone. And have you guys considered that anymore as a possible new thing to put into this building of yours? I, I think it's on the table for us to do. Yeah. We haven't done it yet because we've, we've our, done some prototyping. Yeah, we've done some prototyping, but we haven't moved that far yet, simply because of the relocation and, and you know the other issues we've had here and there. Um, it's, it's, it's it's on our agenda. You're adding seen, new machines too, right? Right. Yeah, we we've got a couple new molders we're putting in. 
Um, we've used some 3D printing not for prototyping tool or prototyping products, but for tools. Okay. We found a lot of times, um, oh, when, and we've largely used it in our brass investment casting area. Reese's actually you probably better to talk about it than about yeah, the couple of uses um, we had for it. We had actually been using it as a substitute for the trim that was traditionally done on candlesticks. Yes. Um, if we could 3D print a mold that was capable of holding uh, the frogs and the guardrails respectively, yeah. it would shorten the time in which it would take us to yeah. uh, tree up product. Typically, something that could take me upwards of three to four days to do properly and have the best possible turnout as far as the pieces go. Um, we could shorten that down to just two days or even one if you're doing it, if you have a crew committed to it. So right. that's something we prototyped with some, and we've had mixed results. Some of them have turned out better than others. Um, we are currently still relying on our our basic method using the candlesticks and the traditional investment casting, but we are continuing to search into that a little bit further to see how we can optimize that portion of the business. Okay, I got a question, and it's on topic, is with regards to the candle wax process, the wax melts out yeah. the whole tree. All the wax melts out that was sh shaped the form mm -hmm. that you then pour the metal into. Mm -hmm. Are you able to get 3D type material to also melt out like the wax does? We believe so, yeah. yeah. Oh wow, this so. could be good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That could be a huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, especially when we're doing things uniformed as we would with this. Yes. Uh, is it's fitting every time it fits the same design. Uh, wow. we've seen a lot of, uh, again, we've seen some mixed results with it where we've had not quite a perfect burnout, but we're narrowing in on what that would be. Yeah, a, a lot of times uh, 3D printing is not great for the level of detail of like a brass cast frog, but it is great for something that holds all the frogs in a line. Yes. And so he, he doesn't have to drill holes and he doesn't have to hand put them in and keep them square. The jig does it for him. We've also worked on uh, using 3D printing to make a couple of little tools or jigs that help in his process or help in, um, we've got a little tray done up that holds parts for turnouts. And they're okay. sorted and they're, you don't have all these long trays in front of you. You have a little container that's easy to pull out of and it's consistent that way. So we've, we've used some 3D printing for that. We'd like to use it more as far as prototyping goes, but we're, we keep coming back to like the tools we can build with it. That's been working well for us because it's, it's cheap. You can rapidly prototype it. It doesn't take any time to design it if you know what you're doing. And we can build it in house, so that's that's kind of where we've been heading with it. Wow! Wow! It's, it's, I don't think it's going to cool. replace high quality brass parts or high fidelity yeah. injection molding, but it will. I think there's some uses for it for sure. Isn't it awesome when you can sit around people that are this smart? Yeah. This is a good show tonight, yeah. Joshua. It's a great <laughs> I'm going to watch show. this one. I am too. I can't <laughs> wait. Gentlemen, is there anything else going around the table that you want to cover about microengineering, the future, and how happy us bottle railroaders are I can't that wait. you guys know what I, you're doing? I can't wait till we take some cameras and do a show from their new facility. That'll that's, be fun. Just, that's just what I wanted to say. Once we get a relocation made, we want to invite, <laughs> we want to invite the show. How many up. hours is that? Uh, About two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half hours. Yeah, that's, 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 that's so bad. bad. That's a hop and a But we want, not only do we want to show you the new facility, show you what we're working on, but we want to show you the community where, we're, where we are. Uh, it's, uh, it's a wonderful place. It's, it's, it's going to be a good home for microengineering. I know they've been here a long time, and I've, we've heard from some local folks that say, boy, we sure hate to see you that far away. But it, moving to a place like this, makes the company survivable. In, in today's labor markets and such, the cost of labor in the, in the city, in this area, is such that uh, over time it, it'll, it'll take its toll well, on and, the business. And you're still in the Midwest. It's right. not like you're going to outsource all your no. things no. to China. You're here. It's being American made by American people. Right. You know, and that's amazing. That's great. I'm glad and, to hear that. We want to do, too, we want our employment to not be something that's a lot of turnaround. We want very low turnaround. We want to keep people around and take care of them for a long sure. time. Um, perfect world. Everybody I've got now, I want to see them through to retirement. Obviously, that's not going to work. But, you know, that's kind of our goal is to take care of people, too. And we think that's that huge. works better yeah. by moving to a smaller area where this kind of manufacturing doesn't really exist. And this is a, a very unique job. So, um, well, we're, and we're it's, it's you know, you guys are f a family. So yeah. already the business is family oriented. Mm -hmm. And that means a lot to people to have a family owned business that True they that. can work at. You know? Well, our, our, um, our folks that work for us, they're family, too. We, exactly. A we, mother we and try daughter to, and church folk that know yeah, each we, other. We try to, to uh, treat them as such and, and 
and it's worked great so far. Very cool. That is that is the one thing that we can't, uh, you know, there's there's not been a problem with is, is the uh, folks that we that's have great. brought in to help. That, that's mm -hmm. absolutely great. And honestly, when you think about it, you, uh, the four ladies that's working there right now for us, you know, their, their total, their total experience is, you know, a couple of years. You know, we're looking at four people, it's six to eight months experience, but they're doing a great job. That's awesome. And they, you know, it, we didn't have to have 50 years experience. That's it. We, wonderful. We're, we're getting out of them what, what will help the company thrive. And truly made in the USA. Right. Yeah. And I've had the opportunity to go there on some days and just help package turnouts or help package. <laughs> One time I was counting uh, spikes. Uh, <laughs> I think I got fired on that job. But it was about weighing them. I'm not counting them. There's all these specialties that you've got to figure. Track. Once, the you, the track. Track. once you teach, I love that. Once you teach these employees, this becomes a profession specialty. Yeah, Whereas exactly. Once you've once they've learned all this over a period of say a year or so, or even five years of working there, right. their 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 worth because of their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because just like you said, you know what it sounds like when the smoker ain't working right because the belt's off by. Uh, I can hear right. that from inside. That's, that I that can comes hear from the experience and little, the detail. It's just yeah. And well, that's awesome. Living in a small yeah. community like that, you get people like that. Good good folks. Yes yes. I'm glad to see that microengineering is in wonderful hands. Yes, yeah. amen, yes. right? Well, thank you. We're, we're we appreciate your it. confidence in us. Um, <laughs> the we, product we really will sustain do. itself. Yeah. As long yeah. as you guys can keep up with the wheels, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the mouse, yeah. the hamster and the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. As long as you guys, I know, right? Keep I know, right? Flying. Guess what we're about to do? I'm going to hand John the uh, hammerhead throttle from NCE, and this Ooh. is the pro cab power system that we use down here to run the layout in the basement. I'm going to hand Jack the small throttle, which is really cool. It's got that red LED uh, Ooh, readout let, on it. Let's run and this. And we're going to put this Navajo mine train yeah. on tonight and do a really neat run by. I like that. Um, this is the best hobby in the world with some of the best people in it. I want to say thank you to Richard. And yes, by the way, Daniel Coombs is here too. Hi, Daniel. On the camera too. Hey, Daniel. It's good to have you here tonight. I'm glad that you're finding time to come back, and you as well, Joshua. So, John, Jack, Reese, thank you very much. Look at you sitting over there. We've got good sound. So, I'm secure. I don't even have the headphones anymore. No, you no. Don't scare me like that. Scotty Hicks, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. My best hobby in the world with some of the best people in it, guys. Let's go run some trains. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's do a thumbnail. You get to hold up your building. I think you oh. can do that. I, it could be dangerous. <laughs> it's just one of my thoughts. If you drop it, it'll make really good video. Well, you know what? If I do drop it, we'll just say it's California. Oh. All right, John, Reese, John, and uh, Jack, this is where we all smile and wave at camera number one to create that thing we call a thumbnail. Let's Ready? See some teeth. Go. <laughs> and we got a thumbnail. Let camera roll. Daniel, you can kill yours. I will kill sounds. Good job, guys. <laughs> Did you get to say everything you wanted to say? Yeah, thank you for your hospitality, too. Yeah. We, uh, yes. Thanks for having us. You know, we, it's a, you know, it's an everyday job. job. We're, we're learning fast. But, uh, that's the best and honestly, we're, we're not, we've been great folks. These guys are great. We don't have to learn too many things over again. Oh yeah, so we're making we're at 36 minutes. Okay. No, that's good, that's a good number. Yeah. That one's smooth. Once we got, thank you Scotty for setting up the board again, sir. Oh, no problem. Because that's huge. You have no, it's just, when you get to start doing the editing, you find out like, what's his face, his microphone's not even turned on. Yeah. Austin yeah. Allen, yeah. it happened the other night. Plus. Well, and you Lessons never do those like, little fingers. Lessons Lessons like, like, oh, you know, everything's on the deck. I got the wish.